The Benin Bronzes are a group of more than a thousand metal plaques and sculptures that decorated the royal palace of the Kingdom of Benin. Most of these objects were looted by British forces during the Benin expedition of 1897, as imperial control was being consolidated in southern Nigeria. Following mounting pressure and clamor for restitution of holdings of Benin bronzes by European and other Western countries to their home country of Nigeria, Germany has announced it will return its share of the Benin bronzes to Nigeria. Here to talk about this today on radio now, I am joined by His Excellency Yusuf Meitama Tuga, Nigerian ambassador to Germany. The first question I'd ask is, um, many people in Nigeria are of the opinion that with rising insecurity, inflation, unemployment, you know, other immediate threats, the conversation about at work may not be as urgent. Why are you of the opinion that um, the return of the Benin bronzes is a priority? It's always been a priority. You know, life goes on. It doesn't stop because we have insecurity. A lot of other countries have insecurity as well. Uh, the entire globe has suffered immensely uh, from the uh, uh, outcome of, as an outcome of the pandemic. So, and uh, this call for rest restitution, for the return of stolen cultural uh, properties by Nigeria and indeed other African countries is not new. In the case of the Benin bronzes, you could say that uh, the call started shortly after the 1897 Benin uh, massacre uh, by uh, the royal family and has continued ever since. If you look at uh, Nigeria as a whole, uh, Nigeria became independent in 1960 and has been demanding for a return of stolen cultural properties ever since. If you look at the work that uh, the great uh, Ayo Epo did in the 60s, in the 70s, uh, specifically, if you look at the uh, UNESCO convention that called for stolen uh, properties to be returned and to put an end to the stealing and trading of cultural properties, uh, which came into effect. So the work was done you know, in the 60s, uh, people like Ayo Epo of Nigeria, who was the first director general of the National Commission of Museums and, and Monuments did, they pushed this. UNESCO came into effect 1970, 1972, Nigeria sent out a note verbal to all uh, European uh, embassies uh, to return such stolen culture, cultural properties. The agitation went on. 1995, the International Institute for Unification of Private Law was engaged by, by UNESCO uh, to come up to you know, reaffirm uh, the uh, provisions of the uh, convention, the 1970 convention, and came up with the uh, convention on stolen or illegally exported cultural properties in 1995. And it goes on and on and on. So it's not something new. It's not that uh, it's not the way it's being perceived or put that all of a sudden there's an agitation. It's been ongoing. I guess the question they're trying to, and the people who make these arguments, the question they're trying to get at is of what importance are these restitutions? Because it, in the larger scheme of it, it's not just the Benin bronzes we're talking about. We have the Ife statues as well. We have the Nok um, um, ceramics as well. Of what importance, how important are these um, restitutions of cultural artifacts to our country? Extremely important because it gives us a sense of uh, identity, a sense of self. Uh, it strengthens our sovereignty and uh, also reaffirms the great work that uh, uh, Nigerians of past have done in creating the African school of African historiography, okay? Because there was a time when uh, the only history we had was what was uh, narrated by outsiders who felt that Africa as a whole had no his history of significance, particularly Sub-Saharan Africa, had no history of significance uh, before engagement with enlightened outsiders. 
So this reaffirms that this is an integral part of uh, that historiography that came about uh, um, with the creation of the African school and the work that has been done. So it has a lot young people uh, like you. I see you're not uh, as old as me. <laughs> um, would have a greater sense of self. Some of the uh, challenges that we're uh, facing at the moment in terms of nationhood, you know, are further strengthened, uh, uh, addressed uh, by having these cultural properties, particularly to young Nigerians, half of our population, who most of whom cannot visit these Western museums uh, to, uh, to see them, to appreciate them, and to understand how great we were in the past, that, to give us that self-worth. And beyond that, you know, the, the stolen items that need to be returned, you know, the law has to be followed. Across Europe, uh, talks of restitution have been slow and they have largely remained abstract. Why do you think we continue to see a delay in actual tangible action specifics? X amount to be returned at X time to X person. Why is that so hard for us to see? Well, for one, uh, the items, the objects are extremely valuable. Nobody who has them would want to just, uh, you know, willingly uh, give them away without some degree of agitation. It's been proven, you can see uh, that that is the case. Uh, secondly, it brings uh, the um, museums that hold them um, under an existential threat because in many instances, they tend to be the major attractions to these museums. That's why, where people, why people go to see them. Uh, that's why they pay money. And this is how these museums uh, sustain themselves. And then uh, thirdly also, it is a way of uh, hiding away um, some of the shameful acts that took place uh, during the colonial era. Uh, because with, you know, uh, the return uh, or bringing them the issues to the fore comes other uh, attendant issues that need to be addressed as well. Uh, some of the crimes that were committed during the uh, colonial past. And uh, a lot of people don't want to deal with uh, such issues. They would rather just hide everything away and just you know, uh, ignore them. There are people that are still thinking as if they're in the 20th century. You know, forgetting that we're now in the 21st century. And uh, this is what has given birth to some of these uh, issues uh, surrounding Black Lives Matter, you know, redressing the issue of colonialism uh, and so on and so forth. Mm. So I'd like to ask now as um, a follow up to what you have just said, do you think that the call for restitutions have any significance um, to the sort of a negotiation of what's the new relationship between the global north and south will be. Do you think that the giving back of these looted items has is significant to um, how global north and global south countries will um, interact moving forward? Absolutely, because it, it, it touches on the very core of, of the issue of the infantilization of the global south and particularly of sub-Saharan Africa, where you know the mindset uh, which comes from you know the uh, racist ideologies that uh, brought about colonization in the first instance, uh, look at uh, black people and Africans as uh, not being at par with their lighter brothers and, and, and sisters. So if you look at um, you know, the works of uh, Hegel, the philosopher Hegel, for instance, who uh, came up with the concept that uh, Africa is unhistoric, Black Africa is unhistoric. Like I said earlier, that uh, it has no history worthy of notes uh, before contact with enlightened outsiders. You move on to the um, ideas of, uh, you know, contemporary uh, historians and um, international relations gurus who uh, 
essentially said that um, we were still living in the pre-Newtonian world. You know, Isaac Newton, you know, had a eureka moment when an apple landed on his head and he woke up and that's what made him think about gravity and uh, start, that's when the West started applying science uh, to, uh, to life and understanding it, that we have not reached that uh, yet, or we don't understand it. Well, this, you know, uh, vitiates all these arguments because for you to create a, a work of, uh, of beauty and of precision, like a Benin bronze or a Noc terracotta or, you know, Ife bronze and several others all over uh, Nigeria, the, 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 you know, you ought to have imbibed in the culture of precision, uh, to, to, scientific methodologies applied to it. So, you know, this brings all of these things uh, to the fore and redresses them, you know, because then we will start to gain some sort of respect. And this is something that, uh, Festat, you are, you are too young to know. I was young. Well, I read uh, a lot of books Festac about Festac. Yeah. When Festac 77 uh, happened, it was the, the, the entire black world coming together in, in, in Nigeria, you know? Uh, Stevie Wonder played there. You had, uh, you know, the likes of Wole Shoinka and uh, uh, the great uh, artists like uh, sculptors like Emopai, you know, people from, uh, you know, the Caribbean. They all came together to appreciate Leopold Senghor, the, uh, the, the, the president of uh, Senegal, who was also uh, a literary a poet and a heavyweight. Um, all of this was to address the issue of the perception of Black Africans and, 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 and Black people in the world as a whole um, by, by, uh, by non-Africans, non-Black people, as well as by ourselves, so that we appreciate ourselves and gives us that sense of, you know, people underestimate the importance of uh, of self-worth, self-esteem uh, in nation building. It is something that is very, very key. And uh, this is what uh, this would, uh, would address. Hmm. Okay, so in, in essence, the call for the restitution is a call for the return of our national identity, the relearning of our history. Absolutely. What happened in Ife? Uh, during uh, the excavations that uh, revealed a lot of these um, Ife bronzes and terracotta. Uh, one of the, uh, the, the leaders of the excavation uh, who was an archeologist, a German archeologist at the time, uh, came to the conclusion that no, look, this is too good to have been uh, uh, created. It couldn't have been the work of Africans or black people. This must have been the work of uh, the lost Greek uh, um, colony or, 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 or um, what was it, uh, continent of Atlantis. Mm, yes. Because it's too good. You know, the black man doesn't have the acumen to create something like this. So you can see the, the thinking uh, behind all of this and the, the fact that Nigeria has always been at the forefront, uh, it was always Nigeria and the frontline states, states in the uh, 60s and 70s, fighting apartheid in South Africa, fighting uh, the racist regime in Rhodesia, in Angola, in Mozambique. You know, we fought, we actually made, did a lot of sacrifice. I went to school with, uh, with South African kids and uh, Namibians in Nigeria, in a federal government college. They were sponsored 100% by the government of Nigeria at the time, um, simply because we disagreed with that. So it is not surprising that Nigeria should also be leading uh, the agitation, uh, the push, the demand for a restitution. All right, so now talking about what I can call your second country. You are the Nigerian ambassador to Germany after all. 
Many have applauded Germany's announcement that it will return its share of the billion bronzes to be displayed at the Edo Museum of West African Art. What do you make of this announcement? I only work with official communications and uh, I have not received any official communication to say uh, Germany has agreed unequivocally, unambiguously that it is returning these uh, stolen uh, cultural properties to Nigeria. You know, it's interesting that you say that because there hasn't been a detailed agreement and um, a detailed agreement has not been officiated. And you do have history with official communication and the Germans and the restitution. So let's talk about your letter and um, the year long wait for a response that culminated in a Twitter announcement, basically. What do you make of this again, ambiguity, this abstraction, this lack of um tangibles in, in the communication do you do you think that this perhaps um foreshadows a not quite taking it seriously enough or a non-commitment on on the part of germany for example to actually go through with this restitution well uh let me say this um whatever the delay whatever the um the uh the lack of response at some points. Uh, we do have a response. We've gone beyond that now. Um, it was uh, these efforts and the communications from the embassy uh, to the German government that ultimately led to the visit of a... Um, a the head of the foreign ministry. Yeah, yeah. 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 so states. Nigeria, visiting Abuja, visiting Benin. Uh, meeting with the uh, Nigerian government officials. So we're, 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 we're happy about that. And these things do happen um, because, of course, it's, uh, it's a matter that, um, like I explained earlier, is not easy to deal with, you know, because it, they are stolen uh, property. So, you know, and, uh, you know, understandably, this is not done by this generation of, uh, of, of Germans, even though it does not take away uh, the fact that you know someone bought stolen cultural property, and there's no statute of uh, limitation when it comes to this sort of thing, you know. And uh, these are things that were documented properly um, by uh, or addressed properly by um, by international conventions, international resolutions, and if we are to continue to um, to demand that countries um, uh, respect international law, respect good governance, uh, respect international best practice, and uh, respect uh, um, um, all these things that 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 define um, you know uh, the international uh, the, the committee of of, of nations then you know, certainly we have to respect this issue of restitution. So just to be clear, you are aware of the, you were aware of the visits, but you are not aware or you haven't um, received any official um, statement or documentation saying that um, Germany will return its share of the looted Benin bronzes at X amount of time. No, I'm not aware of it. It hasn't said specifically when it's going to be returned. I have heard, you know, uh, severally that ultimately it has to be returned, um, but not to say unequivocally it's going to be returned and this is when we intend to return it. And this is what we're, we're, we're hoping for. Mm, and let's talk a little bit about this hope. Now, what do you expect to hear in the coming days or weeks? What I would expect to hear is, first of all, um, uh, robust efforts towards um, an audit that would specifically de uh, you know, determine what is being held and what is going to be returned and when. Okay, uh, I would expect that there would be um, some visits back and forth. Um, I would expect that uh, in the experts in this field, uh, for instance, the Director General of the uh, National, the Nigerian National Commission of Museums and Monuments would at some point have to uh, visit Germany uh, to engage directly 
with his counterparts here and uh, also with the museums that are holding uh, these items. You know, there has to be some openness so that we take stock of what is uh, there. Not that we don't have ideas of, as to what is being held and, uh, and where and, uh, and what quantities, but it's, it's good to uh, uh, cooperate uh, between the two countries, collaborate, and, and, and properly, you know, define uh, matters, and then you know, we move on to the issue of uh, the return. It's it's not rocket science, so it's not something that should take too, too, uh, too long. Somebody steals something that belongs to you, he takes it to a pawn shop. Somebody buys it from the pawn shop. You go and report to police. Police trace it to the pawn shop, and they see where it is. It's in your house. Uh, what do you do? Do you start saying, well, okay, I will lend it to you to use it for some time in your house. You know, let's say it's a watch. I will allow you to wear it to go to a wedding and naming ceremony, and then you have to give it back to me. It doesn't work that way. You know, you say, oh, yeah, sorry, it's your watch. Yeah, take it back. But that is precisely, that's precisely what the British, specifically um, the British Museum is saying. Uh, so they acknowledge, they say that they have acknowledged that um, the circumstances around the acquisition of Benin objects um, were, you know, it was a theft, um, but they believe this strength, and this is direct quotes, by the way, we believe the strength of the British Museum collection resides in its breadth and depth, allowing millions of visitors an understanding of the cultures of the world and how they interconnect over time, whether through trade, migration, conquest, or peaceful exchange. A lot of grammar, <laughs> to be honest, a lot of grammar. So you're saying it's really straightforward then. It was yeah, totally how many returning. Nigerians visit the British Museum? How many? You know, it's something that belongs to Nigeria and we need it more than they do. They just need it. Uh, to show to, to to make money out of it by showing it, to also show that uh, to try and uh, somehow cover some of the uh, crimes of the colonial period. To say, well, look, this is all uh, a study in comparative culture, and you know we've been subscribed to this idea of uh, you know uh, the international uh, nature of, uh, of of culture, and uh, you know trying to bring to showcase. Uh, global culture and that we're all the same, but that's that's not really the issue. It, it can be displayed in Nigeria. It can, the Benin bronzes belong maybe somewhere close to the Oba's palace that was burnt back then, you know, you can put it, you know, and the moat, you know, it makes more sense there when you see it in its natural habitat. Same mm -hmm. way that the Nok Terracotta probably belong, uh, they, they, you would appreciate them more instead of being uh, in uh, Yale University, and then as they continue to be traded illegally over the internet, there you know you would appreciate the Nok Terracotta maybe in a in a museum in Abuja or in Kaduna or in Southern Kaduna, uh, where they came from. So, yeah, right, so it's, really it's, it, it's interesting that you brought um, that up. Um, so the Edo Museum for West African at Zemoa, um, which is being designed by Ajayi Associates, um, which work is supposed to be was supposed to begin in 2021. I'm not sure if it has. It's a collaboration between the Legacy Restoration Trust and all of that. What are your views and what are your hopes for um, museums like this? And what it role do they very, play? Very good idea, brilliant. It still does not stop. It doesn't say that you have to build a museum for you to uh, say, okay, it, finally the museum has been built. Now I will return them. No. And the argument that is put forward about uh, preserving these uh, bronzes and all of that, that is another lame, redundant argument, you know, because we Nigerians had these Benin bronzes. In some instances, we had them for 400 years and we were keeping them. We were keeping them in good condition for the outsiders that came and massacred people in Benin to look at them and appreciate them and steal them. So what sort of conditions uh, for preserving art existed 
not just in Benin where they were stolen, but in Britain itself at the time, in Europe. How good were the museums? Were they air conditioned? Were they, you know, and I have been to museums. I've had also the opportunity uh, to go down to some of the basements of uh, uh, one or two museums. And I've seen the way that these items are kept. They are not kept in some sort of fancy, uh, high condition, condition of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, you know, that, that looks at the, at the ambient, uh, you know, temperature and all this. This is all a myth. And again, it's tied to this um, concept that has been fed into our minds that Oyibo knows better. He knows how to keep things better than, than we do because they have the science, they have air conditioners, they have chemicals. They have, that's not the way it is. They, a lot of them are actually, you know, going to waste. They're being destroyed in, in some of these museums, in their cellars. And that's not their natural habitat anyway. So you make something out of mahog mahogany or ironwood or some other wood that naturally uh, grows in Nigeria. And then you take it uh, abroad where there's winter. You know, you can see how things, how it affects that, you know? Yeah, I mean, we see it with some of the items that you buy, items of, of, of clothing also that are made in other parts of the world. Leather, some leather, you know, is not good for uh, Nigerian weather because it's too hot. And some that is maybe made in Nigeria, if you take it abroad, you'll see how it changes, how it begins to uh, spoil. So. You know, some of these arguments are just, you know, they are dilatory tactics to delay, you know, what is inevitable, which is to return these cultural properties. Mm -hmm. But um, following the visit and a press um, statement, Governor Godwin Obaseki, the governor of Edo State, um, has said that he believes and is of the opinion that culture is a living thing and that um, the idea of having a universal display is something we cannot run away from. Do you think that there are some who say, well, um, the renegotiation of who holds what may not necessarily translate to a permanent move from one place to the other. Um, do you agree with those people who say we can share, for example? I, uh, I contacted uh, Governor Obaseki after that statement was taken out of context and was being used by some people here in Germany to say, well, look, even the governor said that. And he said categorically that that is not what he meant. And what he said um, was recorded and it's out there in the public domain. And that, you know, people are just trying to be mischievous. But yes, we're not saying, you see, we're not saying that we're not, uh, we don't share the same human heritage or that we're not brothers and sisters. We're not racist. We share all of this, but it still doesn't mean that, you know, you steal something and from somewhere and you keep it. You know, everybody, we're Nigerians and all of us Nigerians. You have your own house. I have my own house. It doesn't mean that we're not brother and sister and that we come from the same country, but you cannot now come to my house, steal something, and then take it to your house and say, oh, look, come on, you know, there's a common heritage and we're all together. You know, it doesn't work that way because if I die, God forbid, you are not going to inherit what I, what I own. My children will inherit that, yeah? So, you know, these are things that, you know, should not be modeled up. There's a, clear, of course, we will hold it, we will, it will be displayed. Um, it is in our own interest for people from different parts of the world to come and appreciate what is ours, what is our culture. And maybe we will even find uh, common threads and, uh, and, 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 and certain commonalities in terms of work of art, in terms of uh, perspective, 
with uh, other parts of the world when it comes to those uh, specific uh, works of art. So we appreciate that we celebrate humanity, but you know, in terms of ownership, you know, uh, that needs to be de defined. Well, it's certainly been an interesting conversation with a lot of interesting analogies. <laughs> um, so thank you very much, Ambassador. Final question, and I've taken a bit of your time today. What can we expect from the embassy, the Nigerian embassy in Germany um, moving forward? How do we expect that your office will move this conversation forward? Well, um, we continue to put uh, subtle diplomatic pressure um, we continue to create uh, awareness. We continue to liaise with the uh, relevant uh, ministries, departments, and agencies back home, uh, specifically the uh, Ministry for um, Foreign Affairs. The minister has been very supportive uh, uh, and is also actively pursuing this. Uh, same as the Minister for Information uh, and culture, he has also been very supportive. If you look online, you'll see that he's actually made quite a few statements uh, surrounding this, uh, this issue. And then, of course, the Director General of the National Council uh, Commission on uh, Museums and, and Monuments, who is the expert and whose um, founding act also addresses these issues specifically. And then, of course, uh, the numerous uh, state governments, uh, the governors, Governor Obaseki, who we've uh, uh, talked about, uh, of the those states, um, several of all the other, you know, because every single state has something of uh, cultural uh, uh, or historic value in, in Nigeria. So this is why when we talk about uh, restitution, we're not just talking about the Benin bronzes, and that's why it should not just be restricted to the Benin dialogue. We're talking about all stolen cultural properties. Some of them were stolen, remember, after Nigeria became independent. You know, so we'll continue to, um, to work on that, and uh, I'm confident that we shall succeed. Right, okay. Um... Something just came to mind. Seeing as the bulk of these people who are in these positions where they are negotiating all of this are men, and some of the artifacts in question, like for example, Idia um, head, Idia mask, um, um, highlights the feminism um, that's native to Benin. Do you think it takes away from the conversation and it, take, it takes away from the holistic point of view if there are not as many women involved in these negotiations? Because I, I think I've looked at the Legacy Restoration Trust, the Benin Dialogue Group, like you said, governors, um, heads of these um, agencies and associations, they're men. Well, I, I think when it comes to, um, certainly, you know, it could do with, uh, you know, more participation of, of, of women. I would uh, wholeheartedly support that. But um, we should not allow that to detain us either. Because we're able me, to have both conversations at the same time, aren't we? Well, you're having the conversation about restitution. You're doing your own bit. You're a woman, you know, and uh, I know that uh, there are several um, museum um, directors and curators on this side that are women also. Benedict Savoie, for instance, who has recently written a, a book. I don't think, I don't know if I have it here. In German, um, she's one of the foremost um, authorities on the subject. And she was part of the Humboldt Forum, which is the museum that they wanted to um, refer mm, to. Yes, and I know that. She stepped which will down. no longer be displaying um, Benin bronzes, if I'm correct. Well, we don't know. We, we hope that that is the case because the president- I think they of, released uh, this statement. The president of the uh, Prussian Cultural Foundation that owns the museum um, came out recently. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think it was on Saturday or Sunday to say that, um, you know, he doesn't see any reason why they should not be displayed in the Humboldt Forum. But anyway, going back to uh, Benedict Savoie, mm. she's a woman, she's uh, 
strongly for um, the return. She's one of the advisors of uh, President Macron of, um, of France. And like I said, in protest, she stepped down from the Humboldt Forum uh, because she felt it was wrong. It was not uh, ethically the right thing to do to display these uh, Benin bronzes and other African um, stolen property in the Humboldt Forum. And you see, you have to also remember one thing. Uh, the Humboldt Forum is supposed to be in the middle of, um, of Berlin. It's in the palace that was the seat of power for the German Empire. And don't forget that it was in Berlin that the Berlin- You're about to talk about the Berlin Conference. <laughs> Yes, the 1885 Berlin Conference took place. And then 12 years later, mm -hmm. the outcome of that conference when- Culminated to the punitive action, yes. So how would an African feel? How would a Nigerian feel when you display the proceeds of the scramble for Africa in Berlin? You know, so this is something that uh, we have to look at. We have to look at the sensitivities. And of course, you know, uh, restitution has been applied to other uh, atrocities uh, in the world. Why, why should it be different when it comes to uh, restitution to African countries, restitution to Nigeria, restitution to Benin, restitution to uh, uh, the issue of uh, Nok Terracotta, Ute Bronzes, and so on and so forth? Well, we'll continue to uh, watch and observe, and I'm excited for Barnaby's um, book, which I think is out in April 1st. And uh, we'll continue to move the conversation forward. Thank you very much, um, Ambassador. Yeah. And there's this one also you should read. There are ah. loads of them coming out. Interesting. Yeah. And Higgs, also by a man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Benedict Savoir is a woman. <laughs> yes, one, one. There should be more. There should be more. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. You too. Cheers. Bye.